Surely even a child could understand that in a situation where nuclear war is a possibility, the utmost discretion and discernment is required. One might summons the wisdom of King Solomon himself in order to adjudicate the many minds, quite literal, and pitfalls, metaphorical, that bestrew the path ahead of us. We were told by Joe Biden, troops on the ground, the use of American arms inside Russian territory, why, that would be World War III, for God's sake. We will not fight a war against Russia in Ukraine. Direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War III. And it is the Lord's name we must evoke as we assess this situation once again as NATO haphazardly and in a cavalier and lackadaisical fashion steers you and me and our loved ones to the very brink of nuclear war with Russia. For they have said, troops on the ground, the deployment of American arms within Russia, that is a red line and accompanying that red line is a red button. So why, why on earth? Are you and I and our voices not heard? Why can't we be assured that diplomacy, a peace process, be brought to the fore? Here are the words of Colonel Douglas McGregor, friend of the show, military personnel, I would say key strategist and interpreter of geopolitical and military matters. He's talking now, of course, about NATO's plan to get US troops to the front line. Now listen to this and consider for a moment where it could take all of us. And consider for a moment that if you lived in a representative democracy, the means and measures that would be available to you to prevent this happening. NATO are now planning, says McGregor, to get US troops to the front line to fight Russia. Now, you might think that this is in order to support Ukrainian democracy. Well, bear that thought in mind, because what is it we're fighting for in a country that has suspended elections, that has suspended all media, that has significant dissidents and has significant subordination within it, where Gonzalo Lira died in prison as he said he would. And that's a word that goes unmentioned at the White House press correspondent dinner because it can't be utilized and weaponized to empower the establishment further. McGregor rightly asks, what are they thinking? NATO has disclosed its preparations to deploy American troops to the European front lines in the event of a full-scale conflict with Russia. Innovative land corridors are being established to expedite the movement of soldiers through Central Europe bypassing local bureaucratic hurdles. This means they are preparing for war. You thought that the election was significant. I think the election in my country is significant. What's significant about it is it could be an opportunity to boot out the kind of globalists that seem pretty clearly keen to steer us into this apocalyptic moment, an unwinnable war. And I mean unwinnable for Ukraine. I mean unwinnable for Russia. I mean unwinnable for you and me, for surely somewhere underneath all of this, we are a human family. Aren't these the kind of morals that are being obfuscated and lost in this giddying conversation of corruption that appears to be controlled? I'll materially at least, by Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing. Maybe I don't know enough even to make that diagnosis. God knows that's probably true. But it seems that the only way you can make any sense of this at all is by saying that, well, there must be interests outside of the interests of ordinary Americans, outside the interests of ordinary Ukrainians, outside the interests of ordinary Russians, ordinary English, British, Scottish people, because those are the interests that appear to be being pursued right now, because who is being served? by this, by the advancement towards war between two superpowers. This strategic setup enables NATO forces to swiftly react should Putin's aggressive actions in Ukraine extend westward. Reports suggest that these plans also encompass provisions for potential Russian attacks. In such scenarios, troops could mobilize through corridors in Italy, Greece and Turkey to reach the Balkans, or alternatively, advance towards Russia's northern border via Scandinavia. And let me say once again, even though I know CIA carve-outs have literally made content within Ukraine, claiming that I, because of this kind of opposition to war, I'm a Russian asset that I'm aware, as surely you are, that Putin is probably an aggressive dude with his own imperial and military agenda. And I would like the leaders of our nations and NATO in particular to use their collective power derived from our consensus and our tax dollars or tax pounds to use that might to ensure that diplomacy and peace are the pursued solutions. And if peace is not offered and augmented, then why, why not have the full might of the United States? of America and the various encircling NATO forces be deployed. But it's supporting Ukraine in order to make them a hollowed out husk vassal state in order to continue to support the economic interests of those that clearly are veiled now behind our democracies. That's a war we can't back.
surely let's have a look at what british renegade mp Andrew Bridgen booted out of our version of the Republicans, the Tory party, for his outspoken views, correct views in my opinion, around the vaccine, has to say on my country, the United Kingdom, already been in a war. And this is interesting because there are corollaries in recent history, like Vietnam, etc., where you claim, oh, we're just using American commitment, uh, we're just using American equipment or American expertise, all the while advancing towards the kind of conflicts that we have to avoid at all costs. We are actually at war with Russia now. We've and got, we've got. They we, not just haven't told you, haven't I, told you. So say that again. We're actually at war with Russia now. The, the, yeah, we're at war. It might be a bit David Brent moment for me. Yeah, we're at war. Live with it. I can handle it. I can handle it. Armageddon. I ain't bothered. If it did kick off, do anything. Get out. I don't want you lot getting out. It's not worth it. Well, I'll just step in if you want. Let's be big boy shit, mate. Cheers. I met with uh, Andre Kellen, the Russian ambassador in London, uh, a couple of months ago, and. He said that we know that your people are firing those storm shadow missiles at us out of Ukraine because so you couldn't you couldn't train the Ukrainians to do it. We know you're doing it, and I mean everything. Everybody knows that everybody knows that there are lots of U.S. What is this extraordinary adultery? We didn't. We're coaching them how to fire the weapons. We we're just standing at the side. This is like the geopolitical version of just the tip. I may have guided it in. I wasn't. Told, someone else put it there. That was nothing to do with me. Where's the morality? Where's the principles? Where are the values at the heart of this system? And Russia ain't daft. They have their own analysis and they have their own ability to understand what's happening. They recognize that this equipment couldn't be deployed by Ukrainian troops. So in a sense, what we're witnessing is the inevitable and inert slide into a conflict that I don't really think any of us want to deal with. We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. We all have crazy regrets in this life. It may be the acquisition of a crazy pet that's profligate and having too many kittens. That would mean it's necessarily a cat. Or it could be a reckless and ridiculous tattoo. But do not have any further regrets when it comes to matters of nutrition because filled greens could be the key to a good health future for you. It's not like any other green product out there where it's just watered down extracts. With Field of Greens, you get an organic superfood, whole fruits and vegetables selected by not lunatics, not terrorists, not maniacs from the periphery, doctors, legit doctors that care about health, selecting vegetables and fruits to support your bodily functions, whether that's heart, liver, kidneys, your metabolism, or most importantly, in my view, the immune system. That thing's got to be your own personal army protecting you from external invaders. Field of Greens is backed by a better health promise. You will notice your health improve, your vitality, your nails, your hair, your shimmering visage improve before your very eyes, because your eyes will improve as well. That's one of the things I'm hoping. Or they're going to give you your money back. Get started by getting 15% off and free shipping by using my code. If you use my code brand when you visit BrickHouseRussell.com, BrickHouseRussell.com, two S's, two L's, BrickHouseRussell.com and use the promo code brand, you too could be fighting against time. You too could be preventing entropy and decay. You too could have glimmering organic systems shimmering with brick house goodness by using Field of Greens. So use the promo code brand at BrickHouseRussell.com. Brand for 15% off and free shipping. Let's get back to the content. UK, French. The French are in there. I thought it was the Brits were down on the ground and special advisors. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just special advising. I'm just offering some advice. You might want to bomb that territory. Um, Didn't they say there'll be a nuclear war if we do that? Take my special advice. Training sessions isn't, isn't that, and teaching them and showing them. Isn't, isn't that how... But they were apparently... That's how we start with the Vietnam War. Vietnam War, yeah. Dude, what the frack are we doing poking the bear? That's really stupid. They're determined to get us into a war. Pretty extraordinary. Here we have a legacy media outlet acknowledging, listen, the phrase I like here is Biden has given, quietly given the go ahead to use US military equipment and weaponry inside Russian territory, even though that is one of the red lines that means that all of our lives could be compromised and, well, ended. Tonight, CBS News has learned that President Biden has quietly given the go-ahead for Ukraine. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, he talks pretty quietly all of the time, doesn't he? Really he can't summons up much vocal energy. But I think he's saying this quietly, deliberately, because it's a transgression 
of a, an accord that was between him and the people to not start a bloody nuclear war. To launch limited airstrikes with U.S. weapons inside Russia. Ukraine may use the weapons on the Russian side of the border near the besieged Ukrainian city of Kharkiv against concentrations of Russian troops, artillery and planes. This OK, well, as long as Russia haven't said that those actions would lead to a nuclear war, former Russian president Dmitry Medvedev, who is now the deputy of Russia's Security Council, warned Thursday that the US and NATO risk a direct conflict with Russia and a full-fledged nuclear war by pouring weapons into Ukraine. The pumping of Ukraine by NATO countries with weapons, the training of its troops to use Western equipment, the dispatch of mercenaries and the conduct of exercises by the countries of the alliance near our borders increase the likelihood of a direct and open conflict between NATO and Russia instead of their war by proxy, Medvedev wrote. And perhaps it's no different than colonial imperial wars have always been certain economic and corporate interests undergirded by nations. Perhaps this is no different than the East India Tea Company. Perhaps this is no different than the state imprisoning all of us in our homes to apparently facilitate the agenda of other interests, at very least pharmaceutical, at very least those that benefited from the wealth transfer. Maybe it has always been this way. Such a conflict always has the risk of turning into a fully fledged nuclear war, he added. This will be a disastrous scenario for everyone. While it's widely believed that a direct war between the US and Russia could quickly turn nuclear, <laughs> that's just such a heavy idea. It could quickly turn nuclear, let's try not to worry. The risk doesn't appear to be factored into the Biden administration's Ukrainian policy. Would you not think that that's a risk that you'd factor in? Like when I think about how I plan like a drive across Florida, oh, are we going to have enough fuel? If one of the things I was doing could cause a nuclear apocalypse, that'd be right at the forefront of my planning. Doesn't appear to be factored in though. Over the past few months, the US has significantly escalated its support to Kiev in its war against Russia for increased military aid training and expanded intelligence sharing. Well, that's a cause for concern. Thank God we have the diplomacy and expertise of NATO to help us. Thankfully, NATO is run by a diplomatic and discreet individual that understands the significance of what's happening and doesn't use body language designed to insult aggressive leaders of nuclear superpowers. Stoltenberg, leader of NATO, shrugs off Putin's warnings. I'm not bothered about your warnings. Don't shrug them off. Heed them. Heed the warnings. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg on Friday shrugged off warnings from Russian President Putin against NATO countries allowing Ukraine to strike Russian territory with Western weapons. This is nothing new. It's been the case for a long time. Every time NATO allies are providing support to Ukraine, President Putin is trying to threaten us to not do that, Stoltenberg told reporters during NATO foreign ministers meeting in Prague. And an escalation, well, Russia has escalated by invading another country. Well, remember, there's a complex history and a complex lead up to that that involves the maiden coup in 2014, the rejection of a treaty at uh, the beginning of this conflict. Boris Johnson was involved. We've covered that many times. His comments come after the US and several other NATO countries gave Ukraine the green light to strike Russian territory. The very fact that they're given a green light suggests the degree of their involvement. They're making key strategic military decisions near Kharkiv. The step marks a significant escalation uh, in the proxy war and could provoke a major response from Russia, despite Stoltenberg downplaying the risk. Is it possible that to them a full-scale nuclear war isn't a problem but an opportunity? This full-scale nuclear war could be a real opportunity for those of us that have incredible bunkers in Hawaii. Here's Greenwald, our fellow rumbler and always astute and accurate voice on such matters. While Western pundits and American liberals with flags in their bios continue to feel strength and purpose by prolonging the war in the Ukraine and forcing Ukrainians to die as conscripts, scenes like this of violent resistance to being drafted are increasingly common. Now remember, again, like the pandemic, this is all apparently undergirded by compassion, by kindness, by a regard for the sanctity of life, by a love of democracy. We have to protect democracy, but they're not having any elections. They've only got one political party. They are banned all other media. They're not holding elections for years. When we say democracy, we mean our will enacted at a global level. Spare a moment to consider the impact on Ukrainian conscripts. Sometimes I feel like this when I run into Ukrainian people. But I'm on your side as well. I'm on everybody's side in these conflicts. I want us to try and find a decentralized way to live together harmoniously, if imperfectly, in the light of the sacred available to us all. And when you see a moment like this, a man being dragged off from either his wife or mother, hopefully not both, I'm not 
not judging. I'm not judging. Who am I to judge other people and how they live? It makes you question the veracity of this entire project because this guy don't seem to be too happy about Ukraine's ongoing war with Russia, and he might like a peaceful diplomatic solution too. Wouldn't it be best for all of us? Isn't that becoming clear at this point that we should be looking for peace and harmony together? Come on, give us more taxpayer dollars for democracy. We've got to support democracy. I suppose because I'm always involved in making this kind of content that I forget that it has real human consequences. I wish that we could offer something as sincere as a prayer for peace. I wish we could find somehow our common human familial bonds. I wish that there were a light inside of us and a voice available to us that could protect, conserve and honor the people of Ukraine as well as the people of Russia and all of the people warring now across the Middle East, acknowledging that we are here for such a short while, that whatever our differences are, they're nothing like as significant as our common bond and brotherhood. And if we don't have any recourse to meaningful values, then we are doomed here. That's why it's so important that our leaders act in alignment with real principles. That's why it matters when they criminalize opponents while simultaneously plagiarizing their ideas, ideas that while they were in opposition, they claimed could be used to condemn, in this case, Donald Trump. It's extraordinary for me to see us moving towards potential nuclear conflict without recourse to reason, without recourse to any meaningful principles. As man has replaced God at the center of our universe, as they tell us that there is no such thing as nature, as there's no such thing as meaning, that we're just spilling through space and time, just mere entropy amidst the molecular billiard game played across the heavens. What we're losing is any ability to say this is right and these are the people that should lead us and these are the values that we should look to. And this is how we can open our hearts together. Can anyone claim that prolonging and funding this war is better for Ukrainian people? Or can anyone claim that a better solution would not be a reach out and a spirit of diplomacy and peace and common brotherhood with Vladimir Putin? It isn't anything better than even that scene of a man being dragged off away from his mother or wife. We'll find out. We'll do some research into that. Because that is merely the tip of the iceberg. You know that elsewhere people are losing fathers and brothers and mothers and sisters, annihilation and decay. And for what? Don't you have the sense that we're not participating in this war for humanitarian reasons? Not because it's the right thing to do, not because Putin's invasion was criminal, but because certain economic interests are served. Doesn't it seem to you to be convenient that these wars are beneficial to a certain set of interests, interests that appear to hover above democracy, manipulating it with vile magnetism and dark power, rather than allowing our institutions to serve the people that they were set up to serve? We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? You've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you and your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very very own 1775 coffee. This is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had. Seriously good, ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try Rumbles 1775 revolutionary coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favorite, it's dark, of course. I've always found the lure of the dark irresistible. I'm sorry, how can I stay mad at you? Well, you're just going to have to wait over there for a little while. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now, pick up your first bag, use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know? 
Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.